What's the deal, y'all? Look, we back with another video, man. We got finally a proper puncher with one hit KO power in modern boxing, Tim Zhu. He's a uh, Russian Australian, so he's born in Australia, but he's Russian. Um, middleweight boxer, man, bro, is 24 and 1. 17 wins by knockout, bro. His last fight was against Sebastian Fendor, which was the craziest fight, bro. They was both leaking. Fendor was leaking. It was it was blood everywhere. Tim Zhu had to cut on his head. It was blood everywhere. And Sebastian Fendor, Fendora is like seven foot eight. This shit was crazy, bro. But that was my first fight I ever like fully watched from Tim Zhu. I've seen other little clips and highlights, but uh, that was my first fight really watching him. And bro is nice. I ain't gonna lie, he's nice, dog. Um, and he got a fight against Virgil Ortiz in August, and whoever wins that one, um, whoever wins that one gets to fight the winner of Terrence Crawford versus uh, Madron Madronov. So I would love to see him fight Tim uh, Terrence Crawford, bro. Terrence Crawford is nice. Terrence Crawford is nice, bro. Uh, so let's get into this highlight video, man. If y'all like the video, you guys want to see more boxing uh, or sports combat. Let me know in the comments, hit that like button, subscribe, let's get to it. It's ever, but the thing is, is Damn! Children often stay in the shadow of their famous parents, but Tim Tzu is an exception. God damn! Hello! Inheriting the power that runs in his family. Yeah, he's funny. Oh, he shot again and again. The Australian boxer with Russian roots tears everyone in his way to pieces. No! Me! 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 He's looking to stop Tony Erickson! And glides towards the undisputed champion. That was against Inouye. As he's gearing up for a crucial title bout, let's trace the career path of the next boxing star. After all, yo, that left uppercut and that right hook are disgusting. And I mean in a good way. <laughs> well, it's no coincidence that Tzu Jr. is nicknamed. Look at that left uppercut, taker. right hook. Oh, oh he's running! <laughs> Timofey grew up in Sydney, Australia, in a family of the linear world champion Kostya Tsu. His father was one of the hardest punchers at the turn of the century. Damn, damn! Oh, he killed him. Sure, he damn. Ah. 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 And in 2001, unified all the key light welterweight belts in a scandalous bout against the then undefeated Zab Judah. Oh, Zab Judah? And, 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 damn! Oh my, that was him? Oh my God, that was his dad? I've seen this video a million times. I did not know that was his dad. His dad was the one that made Zab Judah look crazy? Wow, wow, learn something new every day. Since retiring in 2005, Kostya has been focusing on raising his children. It's not surprising that his eldest son, Timofey, also committed to the sweet science and continued the family tradition. <laughs> Training under the guidance of his uncle, in 2012, Tim had four dozen amateur bouts. Comparisons to his great father were inevitable, but no amount of pressure could stop him from writing his own story. And, you know, I've... Oh, look, I'm, I'm super proud, super proud as a, as a son for, of what my dad did, you know, and... But at the same time, I want to be known as not just Kostya Zhu's son, but I want to be known as Tim Zhu. And then, you know, it's taken years and years of work. 22-year-old Timofey made his pro debut at the end of 2016, joining the 154-pound light middleweight division. Already in his early performances, Zhu actively utilized the jab. Remember Kost. Fired laser sharp crosses. You know, so, uh, you know oh, he's nice he's right. to the game. Maybe one thing. They're all just like oh, yeah, he's a laser. Consistently kept opponents at the end of his punches. Good right, of course. And I wonder if Campbell Hatton... Uh, lovely left to it. And I remember being in a training camp when I was young. Why is that's a punch perfect? Yo, that right Put hand is... To sleep. And I think he wants Tim to... Oh, he don't want no more. Yeah. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. 
The sniper-like straight shots were a hallmark feature of Kostitsu's style. Now the audience had a second chance to enjoy surgical work in the ring. In May 2018, with a record of 8-0, Tim defended his regional title against veteran Larry Sivu. Continuously pressing forward, the Australian uncorked uppercuts. He's a strong rookie. You know, he's his own fighter. He possesses that. And generously distributed hooks. He felt against the ropes and wearing him to the... from that shot, because that was a nice big punch. By the third round, Zhu upped his intensity. Here in round oh, and our three, right hand is nasty. Started with more heat. What there is is a cut high a on the head of... Sivu was doomed to taste the canvas. Which Zhu wipes away. There's a big shot with the right hands. Oh, the fight it's was over. about to resume, but a sudden robot dance. So relaxed him how he threw that right oh, it's over. Look for that again. Convinced the referee to intervene. He face. cannot answer. A similar fate awaited former IBO Asian champion Stevie Ferdinandus, whose period of wakefulness in the ring lasted 60 seconds. Came back and ha! won that one. As it went oh, he barely even touched him. Next, we Zoo welcomed a guest wow. from Argentina, Marcos Carnejo, who devoured a cross right out of the gate. Big overhand right, but Damn. Zoo big right, right. Hey. Big right. Shots and snacked on a series of uppercuts. Have a look at that pace. Big uppercut. Doesn't need it. This is a real G. There's a lot of resemblance. Oh, there. big uppercut, and that'll do it. Finishing one guy after another, Zhu made people take him seriously and was now seen not just as the son of a great champion, but a talented boxer in his own right, capable of reaching the top one day. In the beginning of 2019, Tim earned a shot at another regional title, sharing the ring with former intercontinental champion Danton Vessel with a solid resume of 25-5. Zhu immediately got the right hand going. Landed a nice pull counter. Oh, and shit. smacked Danton with a one-two. May not be the best opportunity and the best. Yeah, that hurt him. That hurt him. He ain't like that. The wobbly opponent was saved by the bell. He ain't like that. In the second round, Tim continued to keep him at point-blank range. But everything comes off this sharp, fast jab. Shooting with sniper like one twos. Vessel's dome endured a couple more connections. Is not too far away. Before eventually cracking. but the thing is, oh god! Showered by subsequent blows, it could have collapsed completely. Timing. Captain Vessel. Fortunately, the referee did his job. Yo, he's like Ryan Garcia. If Ryan Garcia had more technical skills and composure in the ring. If Ryan Garcia had more technical skills and composure, that's like that. Because, bro, is fast and he's strong. <laughs> Which Ryan got those, but he don't got the same technical skill nor the same uh, composure in the ring. He gets emotional. Six months later, Tim challenged the 19-1 Dwight Ritchie. The match between the two bright prospects garnered wide attention in their respective homelands, and two minor belts were at stake. As usual, Zhu trusted his primary weapon. Adding a left hook off of a slip. In the third, he unloaded the reliable one too. Delivered a grazing hook. Sent a right down the pipe. Found another check hook. Adam Wobbly. Then began putting strikes together. In this manner, Zoo Jr. was winning round after round. Oh, he wobbly, he wobbly. The resilient Richie didn't break under the pressure. So in the later portions, Tim conceded the center of the ring. Really putting the pressure on. Assuming the role of the matador. Throwing lots of punches. Chasing his shots on the run, but... Follows. Finds him against the ropes. He goes to work. 
on the inside though. Good shots from Zuni. The adversary still wasn't deterred. Seeking an opportunity in close quarters. Halfway through the final round. Working on the inside. But no matter how tough he was, Sue's skill. Ooh, that right hand. Proved to be the deciding factor that night. Oh, the slips. <laughs> Having he's captured nice. all the he's major nice. oceanic titles, now 25 year old Tim was determined to defend them. The 16 and 3 Jake Brubaker promised to shock the world, but was treated to a classic boxing menu of crosses. Yeah, he's not ready. He's not ready. He's not ready at all. And uppercuts. But he's wearing shots. Zhu was sharpshooting from a distance, <laughs> hurting the opponent as he came in. Chopping, hooking right hand. Suddenly checking the liver. Bow. Tim switched to combination work. Now Zhu goes back to work, and looks ready to go. And a dozen unanswered strikes later. The challenger's corner asked for mercy. Bro, fight like he drunk. Fight like a drunk frat dude or something. <laughs> like, hands. They throwing a towel on him. It was time for a high profile confrontation. Former WBO champion and former Olympian Jeff Horn was famous for his dirty tactics. And a controversial victory over Manny Pacquiao. So Tim explained to him right away that the judges would not be a factor. Tim's confident he's got a, he's got a real. Yeah, 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 give me that. Big shot. Left up. Keeping his finger on the trigger. He poured shots upstairs. So Jeff is being now he charges towards and punched holes in the torso. Oh, oh, good uppercut. That left uppercut hurt. Left oh. to the body. hurt. Took that wind out. Following the second knockdown, Horn's agonizing body finally turned into an anvil. From Zoo, and after the eighth round, equilibrium gone. Again and he gets an Jeff decided not to play the hero. And he's an all new zoo. While being interviewed, the winner politely asked to stop regarding him solely as Kostya Tzu's son. I just want to let everyone know that my name's Tim, not the son. At the end of 2020, I respect Tim horns with Bowen Morgan. That. WBU title. You gotta go in, you gotta build your own legacy, bro. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta separate yourself. You still always gonna be that. So that's never gonna go away, but you gotta separate yourself. You know? holder on a streak of Make sure they know your name. The bout was the main event in a packed stadium in Sydney. Main event. The ring general Two. scouted with the lead hand. Man. Binders Morgan. Good. Added the right to the equation shortly. Yeah, it looks bigger. Very, very. And proceeded to bombard the midsection. With that right hand and yeah. goes to the zone, but Zoo's there. The uppercut caught the foe off guard. Prompting him to take a rest. Oh man, oh he got a six piece. The referee decided to give With the, the biscuit. What they came for, and he wasn't wrong. <laughs> Hello, Ray. Yeah. Parking Morgan into the corner in one fell swoop, Sue justified his nickname, the Soul Taker. And addressed his biggest fan in his post-fight speech. Papa, как тебе? Все нормально? Yeah. In four years as a pro, Timofey became Australia's premier boxing star and a top contender on the world stage. And yet, no matter how hard Sue Jr. tried to step out of the shadow casted by his father, he increasingly resembled him inside the ring. <laughs> Relentless pressure. Calculated aggression. Tyson used to do that movement. Precise, vicious attacks. Ever, but the thing is, 
and unwavering self-confidence, not to mention the looks, hooked the hardcore audience, evoking nostalgia. While also being respectful towards the opposition, Timothy doesn't lean into the good guy persona, keeping emotions outside the squared circle. That matters. I obviously respect my opponent at all times, shake hands, uh, whatever, but there's no love. There's no love at all. That's what I was saying, kind of like with Ryan Garcia, bro. He got too many emotions inside the ring, which causes him to mess up sometimes here and there. Still a great fighter, though. Still a good fighter, but, you know. When he fights guys that are really skilled and technical, like Javante Davis, <laughs> all, see what happens. At all, we're, we're enemies, because you're trying to take my food off the plate and everything that I've worked for. In the spring of 2021, he met Dennis Hogan, a former WBC title challenger with 28 victories and three losses. The Irishman looked to upset the apple cart with a single leg takedown attempt. It's too fidgety. But Zhu quickly reminded him of the rules of pugilism. He prioritized body work. And by the end of the third round, Hogan felt the taste of his own liver. Now solely relying on a Hail Mary. Oh, okay. Never turn your back. deviate from the breadbasket bombing plan. Oh, another one. After thoroughly damaging the midsection in the fifth, Sue tricked Dennis by turning Going up top into an uppercut. Ooh, and forced the red corner to save their fighter moments later. On a hot run of 18 wins, Tim faced some resistance in the form of Steve Spark. Shots from Spark. Okay, Spark. Sue engaged in a back and forth affair. Stevie Spark. He throws his overhead to Spark. And there's another. And dragged his enemy into a grueling brawl already in the second stretch. Oh, over here, right hands. Oh, a big shot. He goes to the body and Spark covers up. Skillfully mixing it up. His shots now is Zoo and he pours in uppercuts. And it's looking. The number one contender oh, for the big world title. Bends through with a left hook again and uppercuts. He said, you want to throw, let's throw. Spark wore it well and the body he goes and untidy from Spark. And he takes hey! shots and tries to work. During the break, Sparks Corner knocked over the bucket of ice, as if accidentally. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're trying to get extra five minutes, dog. Come on, bro. Trying to avoid the inevitable. And they're still in the rings there. Over the top with that shot. They, they don't realize, like... You're giving your boxer more rest, but at the same time, you're giving Tim Zoo more rest. So why do you think that that doesn't help you out? That just cancels everything out. Unless your fighter is on the verge of falling off his legs with one punch, which wasn't necessarily the case, you're helping both fighters. You're giving Tim Zoo more rest, too. And if he already has better cardio, he's already in a better condition, he's going to recover faster. So it really, it works against you. Spark, he has a good one, and he goes to the body to Zoo. Not willing to surrender. Draining out of Stevie Spark. Spark chose to meet his end according to the Bushido code. Yeah, he's body body shot again Damn. And he goes hard. And that'll do it. No Zhu scored his 15th knockout, solidifying his Hannibal Lecter reputation as a liver connoisseur. Yeah, he's body body shot again and down he goes. Soon, Timofey had a chance to vie for the WBO Asia strap, held by the 17-1 Japanese Giga Chad, Takeshi Inoue. Takeshi Inoue, Zoom assertively yeah. occupied the center, takes a body shot. investing into power shots from the word go. From Tim Zhu and a round. want to set something up. Oh. As is customary, he didn't neglect the body. Here in round three, Inoue, but not like that. Looks for a big shot there, and goes to the body and switched up top with uppercuts. 
Ooh. Ah, it's that left uppercut, man. Takeshi found openings for counters. The Soul Taker gave him no time for a breather. Don't turn around. Thwarting the opponent's offense. Ooh, and nice. puncturing his gas tank. Well, maybe he's hurt now. These body shots are Bro, it's surgical. Straight into the body and over the top. Goes soon. And underneath the In the seventh round, he finally managed to stagger the samurai. Bro, he throws these power punches so fucking good, though. You know, like where a lot of a lot of fighters they'll they'll telegraph those uppercuts, they'll telegraph those hooks, especially the hooks. They gonna telegraph those. The old his shits are not telegraphed, bro. They just boop. <laughs> you don't even see it. Bop. Bop. You don't, you don't even see nothing coming, bro. Efficient, quick laser. And now sought to overwhelm him. Something telegraph that one though. Yeah, that one. And to the body he goes. The resilient Japanese spirit not only stayed upright, but brazenly retaliated. Nevertheless, Tsu continued to bulldoze forward. Look how fast he threw that right. Like. And eventually forced him to touch the canvas. I mean, look at that the left uppercut. It's just come out of nowhere, bro. However, no matter how hard he tried to delight the arena with the finish, and once he stoppage. Takeshi was dead set to last the whole distance. Right and... After a blowout victory, Tsu paid tribute to the Japanese warrior. The guy's built like a brick wall. Fucking hit him with anything and he doesn't go down. And warned his future opposition. You boys finish your, your little honeymoons and start get back in the gym and start training. I'm coming for all of you. Every single one of you. Yeah. Like that. In early 2022, Tim ventured to the USA for the first time, where he introduced himself to the audience on the Showtime Network. For, for the first time, where he introduced himself to the audience on the Showtime Network. Former Olympian Terrell Gaucher greeted the guest, possessing dynamite in his hands. Oh, okay, he can hit hard too. He was a okay. serious test. Damn! Shit! and aimed to derail the Australian freight train. May not have been enough to make a dent oh, on the scorecard. We are underway. Putting the pedal to the metal in an instant. Uh, coming forward, Sue. Tim walked right into a well set up counter. Right now, oh, got the better of a right hand shootout. You could tell Tim Zoo was more careful in this fight. I never seen this fight, but you could tell he was definitely a little bit more careful. And you seen that dude a couple little highlights right there. He can hit too, he can hit hard. Just like last time. And aim to capitalize on the success. Right back with the right hand lead, comes to the right to the body and a right to the head. Gaucher looking for a hand in here. Zhu quickly regained lost ground. To to the body, couple shots to the body. Zhu has been down once. Oh, nice, four. nice. Little Finishing one, two, the three. round strong. To the knockdown. There's another sharp right hand from Gaucher. Yeah. Ooh, nice train. Then he upped the pressure with each passing minute. There it Good is. body so shot. Right on body shots. First uppercut for Zhu. So now he's starting to mix that. Gaucher attempted to disrupt the onslaught with jabs. And counted on a straight right. Gaucher's fighting on his back foot, though. The problem was he had diminishing space to maneuver. Yeah. Damn, got him. Tim, on the other hand, only grew bolder. And made his opponent shell up in the fifth. Oh, that right hand was nasty. The Aussie literally peeled Terrell's hands down to land hooks. Oh, that's super high IQ. Revisited the basement Look at his legs, and chose to stay there for some time. You know, one of the sneaky That's just a high IQ. If he gonna stay like this the whole damn time, <laughs> I know one place that's open.
Despite Gaucher's efforts to break free, the soldier mercilessly tightened the noose. You see the right uppercut come back. He said pursuit, Gaucher laying up against the ropes, chopping right hand from zero, left hand slip. Fight back! <laughs> Fight the back! The increasingly Shit. resembled a one-sided beatdown. Ah, damn. This is a fascinating fight, Steve. Terrell persisted in seizing the puncher's chance. But although the victory was a sure thing, Sue refused to relent. He got that dog in him. He secured a unanimous decision, proving that he could handle adversity. Timofey impressed the overseas pundits, many of whom saw championship potential in him. The road to the top was wide open. Amassing a perfect 21-0 record, in March 2023, the 28-year-old contender was given a crack at the vacant interim WBO title. The dance partner, former champion Tony Harrison. You thought Tony Harrison? Okay. Known as Super Bad, was among the middleweight elite, and had over 20 stoppages to his name. Ooh. Let's go. Tim Zhu. Harrison planned to curb Tim's offensive with the lead hand. Running into an obstacle, the Australian countered the cross and began to unload on the inside. And right now, he's not doing that, so he's committed anybody punches from Zhu yet. Here comes Sue, the volume is there now. By the third round, Sue had mastered the range. Good right hand. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you got him dancing. And soon plunged the opponent into turbulent waters. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh, attack, attack. Blocking the enemy's shot, Timofey responded with a hook of his own. Having seized the initiative, he now catapulted the right. Oh yeah, that right landed all day and even showed off his shoulder roll. As time went on, the patented one two came into play. Oh, that right hand all day. There's the jab and then Harrison didn't got, stop firing. He is not back. blocking that. And his snappy jab still posed problems. There's that jab. However, Sue kept the ball rolling. 59-55 at the halfway mark. Making the adversary wipe the ropes with his back. Comes back with a right of his own, and then a left of the with that jab. There's the right hand. Harrison and Yeah, that right, right hand landed in all day. The sweet spot. He was not. He is not protecting that shot. Started spamming the hit button. To the winner, Harrison. Look, like he's not protecting that. Left After shot. a barrage of uppercuts. <laughs> he's got a. Oh my God. God. Harrison sagged down on the canvas. He's looking to stop Tony Harrison. He heroically rose up at the count of eight. Wow. But wasn't fit to go on. Hell no, it's over. In the lead up, Tim promised to drown the American in the ninth round and kept his word. He reaffirmed his championship caliber and addressed his former skeptics turned new fans. I got one, one sentence. What's my motherfucking name? <laughs> Australia, you know, but the world, you know now. Say my motherfucking name. Yeah, talk your shit. According to his contractual agreements, Tim was supposed to face the undisputed champion, Jarmel Charlo, but he pulled out due to injury. Zhu didn't wait around, putting his interim belt up for grabs versus Carlos Ocampo. Can't beat this guy, standing. Oh. The Mexican boasted an impressive record of 35 to two, including 23 knockouts, and was recently on a streak of 12 wins. <laughs> Tim didn't plan to keep the audience waiting. Delivered his old man's one-two, 35 seconds in. Make me. Oh, wow. I was over. And it's... spun the deadly windmill. It's over. It's over. My goodness, like a whole me, run already. Me, but he has to be careful. Taking me, a short pause, he me. unleashed the flu Gigenheimen. My goodness. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Hello.
People rarely survive shots like that. And even if they do, a happy ending is out of the question. Uh oh. Goodbye. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, cop, no. Oh, cop, no. The demolition lasted a total of 77 seconds. And it looks like so looking to close the show! It all started with a straight right disguised by the lead hand. He gave bro cartoon oh, legs. And ended with a left tranquilizing hook. Looks like looking to close the show! The Soul Taker expanded his collection, firmly securing his top contender status. I've got this interim belt, but I'm not satisfied. I want all four. And it's not just the belts. I, I, I literally just want the name Charlo on my resume. Calling him out. Unfortunately, the champion, Jermel Charlo, either was too impressed or couldn't resist the truck of cash for a bout with Canelo Alvarez, or possibly both. Be that as it may, he refused to defend against the Australian. As a result, the WBO decided to strip the American of his belt. Yep. Sue was promoted to a legitimate champion. Yep. And without delay in October 2023, he made his first defense against WBC interim title holder, Brian Mendoza. The Cuban American had caused a sensation in his last two appearances in the ring. First, vanquishing Jason Rosario. Oh, that was a nasty right up the cut. Then chopping down the towering Sebastian Fundora. Oh, he beat Fundora? I did not know that. That makes that Tim Zhu fight a little more interesting. Tim Zhu would have whooped on Fundora, though, if he didn't get that cut, that gash in his head. If he didn't get that from the elbow, he would have whooped on Fundora, to be honest with you. Then chopping down the towering Sebastian Fundora. God damn. Tim Burr! Facing a formidable counterpuncher, Zhu minded his defense. There he goes. He just slaps it down onto Mendoza. There's a right hand. Carefully picked his shots. There's a big He's surging forward and Zhu. One, two, Zhu. Finding left hooks. And catching the foe slipping with lead uppercuts. Set something up by Jabby to the body, but he takes a big uppercut. Halfway through the match, he landed his best punch. Oh, good right. And tried to build on it. Here he goes. Mendoza handled the punishment well. Oh, that's a good right hand from Mendoza. With that right hand. Mendoza, he's trying to show him like Sometimes delivering his own strikes. We're going to find out how mature Tim is. Body shot's a good one. But mostly surviving. Starts to take some shots. From yeah, he's hurt. He's hurt. Lock in. He's hurt. He's hurt. And ending the bout on the feet. He's hurt. Tim successfully defended the strap and attempted to coerce Charlo into taking the fight. Charlo. Where you at? Come out and play! He didn't get a response. <laughs> Instead, he caught the attention of former dominant welterweight champion, Keith Thurman. Who oh, yeah, they were supposed to fight March too. 30th. Let's start the year off right, homie. Still <sighs> fine. Well, we all know what happened with that. Keith Thurman couldn't fight, and he fought some bastards of uh, Fendora instead. And then I think Fendora won by a majority decision. Even though, Tim Zhu, you could have had that. You could have that be a split decision. You know, nobody wins. Uh, not a split decision, but uh, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Draw. It could have ended up in a draw. I would have been fine with that. And Tim Zhu uh, could have got the rematch. Because that cut, bro. If it wasn't for that cut, he would have whooped on him, bro. He would have whooped on Fendor if it wasn't for that cut. So, I hope they get to run it back. But fuck it. He fighting uh, Virgil Ortiz. So, shit. We running that up. Then, if he wins that, he fights Terrence Crawford. Or Virgil Ortiz might win. He's nice, too. He's really nice. So, that can go either way. Or Terrence Crawford might lose the Madrid off, but I think he gonna win. Anyways, that's it. Uh, Tim, oh, my, bad, my bad. Chases a finish in every outing. To get going against Harrison. Oh, wow. 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 And it looks like so Uphold. All right, I ain't trying to get copyright for the music. But that's it. Uh, Tim Zoo, bro.
like I said, he just recently came to my radar, but bro is nice. And I'm excited to see him fight Virgil Ortiz, man. Y'all let me know who you think going to win that fight. If you're watching this video, you're probably going to pick Tim Zoo, but let me know. And let me know what you think of the uh, Sebastian Fendora fight. Let me know how you feel about that one. Uh, and that's it, man. Hit that like button, subscribe, give me more videos to react to. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Remember to keep it real. Real is rare. Real always reaches everyone next time. Peace.